Hey guys, I decided to do a video on how to print with uh, Tolman 645 nylon because uh, I've been dealing with it for about a year and I finally got to figure out how to wear. It didn't take me a year, but I decided to make a video because I never could find a video on how to print with it. So I'm just going to give you some tips and what I do to print with uh, the Tolman 645 nylon. It's a black nylon. I like the black because I print it RC parts with it and uh, I need something that's durable because I race eight scale um, off-road cars and they take a lot of abuse. So I'm just gonna show you what I do and kind of help you um, get started so you're not you know, frustrated and fumbling around like I was for a couple months. So here, this is what I do, all right? First thing I recommend doing is design you a small block, a test print so you can um, figure out if everything is working out right because this the Tolman nylon, the, the, any nylon is, is pretty expensive and um, it's going to be tricky to print with because it doesn't print as easy as you know PLA or ABS or something like that. So design you a block. This is like an inch and a half by two inches. It's 10 millimeters high and just do those because that way you can see if it, if it prints out smooth like this, you know you're right um, because stuff like this will happen and you see here, this is all boogered up and goobered up. That's the infill and it's not um, nice and straight and crosshatched like it's supposed to be. But this is because the temp is not hot enough and that's why it's doing that. And if you keep printing like that, this is how the final piece will look on the top layer. It's got you know pits and holes and it's torn and stuff like that. So um, when you design uh, in your, or when you go into your slicing software, what you need to do is you need to put a brim around whatever part or piece that you're printing. And this is like an eight millimeter brim because that keeps the um, print stuck to the bed. And if you don't do a brim, what it'll do is it'll curl up on you on the edges. It'll start to curl up. And then of course, once it does that, then your print's not gonna be good from there on out. So I'm gonna show you what to do right from the get go. And then we'll uh, talk about printing. First thing you need to do is when you get your nylon, you'll get it in a vacuum sealed bag and you, it's got some silica gel on there and you're gonna think, yeah, okay, everything's fine, it's dried out. It's not dried out. I live in Georgia, so it's pretty humid and I'm down here in my basement. And so you first thing you need to do is you need to take your filament out of that vacuum sealed bag, put it in the oven at 175 degrees and let it sit in there for six hours. Because if you don't, First thing you do when you put your nylon on, you'll see it start spitting and you'll see mist coming out. Well, not mist, but steam coming out. That's because there's moisture in it because nylon is hydroscopic and it's very hydroscopic because if you leave, I've left a roll of filament out sitting overnight and it'll, it'll absorb moisture. So dry it out in an oven, then get you a box. And um, I just put a piece of pipe. There's a video, there's some videos out there how to make you a dry box. And then you can get some uh, silica gel this is actually a blue silica gel. And when there's too much moisture in there and it won't take any more moisture out of there, it actually turns pink and it tells you that it's not drying out anymore. So then you can actually take the silica gel, put it in the oven for a couple hours and it'll turn blue again and everything's great. So I just got, you know, like I got my TPU and my nylon, I got nylon carbon fiber in there and I keep it enclosed and I just drilled some holes and I run it through there. And that way it's just, I can keep it from getting any moisture in it while I'm printing as well. So. Um, the next thing you want to do is make sure everything is enclosed because nylon will warp as it cools. So you want it totally enclosed. You want um, no circulating fans like the, the turbine fan back here. And then there's a circulating fan, I think, in here somewhere. The uh, circulation fan, I got them turned off. Of course, keep your print nozzle fan on because that keeps your nozzle cool. So if you're going to print with nylon, you need to have a heated bed and you need to have a high temp nozzle. And so what I print mine at is, the, my printer, because all printers vary, five to 10 degrees Celsius, I'm printing mine at 270, because if I print it at 260, it's not hot enough. And as you saw on that one piece, it just gets all boogered up and it's not gonna print. The print bed, I, the first layer is 110, and then after that I drop the print bed temp to 90 degrees Celsius. Um, make sure and pay attention to why you're printing Make sure that everything's nice and straight and even. If those lines are wavy at all, that means you're too close and lower your bed. You can do it while it's printing. You just take your knobs 
and you just adjust them accordingly. So if it's wavy, then that means it's too close. If it's the lines are separated and they're not stuck together and they're kind of lifting, that means it's too far away and you need to raise your bed up closer to the nozzle. So, so you can see how this is all nice and straight and everything's printed evenly. Right. So just pay attention to that. Um, keep everything enclosed and just keep an eye on it. The first layer is of course important. So um, once you get it, you know, figured out, everything's gonna print, you know, nice and, and smooth. Oh, another thing that uh, I forgot to mention is I do mine on a smooth bed um, and I use the purple Elmer's glue stick. It works perfectly for this nylon. It sticks nice and good. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, guys, as far as uh, tips on it. If you guys got any questions, man, just, just post them in the comments. Um, I appreciate you watching.